In this video, we will cover the data sets. If I talk about disconnected architecture, data set can be the database of disconnected architecture. As in the normal database, we used to store several tables. Here in data set, we are going to store a number of data tables. As here, when we are working with the data tables, as we have already seen in our previous video, where I created two data tables. Now I can put these data tables in my data set and maybe some more tables like that. Once you start storing several tables inside a data set, you can access them directly from the data set as well, either through the index or through the data table names. So this data table can be created by manually by the code as we have already done or we can also create the data table from the database communication using the data adapter class. Here we are not going to cover the data adapters but in future videos we will surely see how can we populate the data set from the data adapters where the data adapter will fill the data in the data set in the form of a data table. When you have the multiple tables inside a data set, if required, you can also establish the relationship between the tables. As in the SQL also, we have some foreign key constraint for establishing the referential integrity among the tables. We can do the same things here as well in order to maintain the consistency of our data sets data. Now, suppose I have made a query from the database and I have filled up all the data inside the data sets and later I wish to change them. So whenever you make a change in the data set, that changes can be synchronized with the database as well. In this particular video, we will not cover the synchronization, but of course in our coming videos, we will see how can a database and data set get synchronized. So let's go practically and start implementing the data sets. So as in the description I discussed, like data set can be treated as a database of disconnected architecture. That is, I can store multiple tables inside this database, data set and can manage the relationships as well. To do the same thing, what I have done is I have created a couple of methods, get employee table, which is as same as that of my previous example, in which I have created these three columns, a primary key and a four records in that. And similarly, I have created one more table here in this particular example, that is the departments table. So you can see it is very same thing like DT is equal to new data table and this one is department. The name of the table is department. And here I've just added a couple of columns like department ID, which I set as a primary key and this data column, all right, which, which is the department name of type string. And later I have added a couple of records into it like one is the administration department and second one is the human resources department. So once we are done with these two tables, what I can do is I can add these tables in the data set. So for doing that here, I have created one more method generate data set. And in this particular method, what I have done is I have first of all called the method called get employee table, get department table and have passed the reference in the variables EMP and DEPT of type data table. And once we have these, I simply initialize the data set object DS, which I have taken in the beginning of this code, given a name like my DS and later I just added a couple of tables. Make sure like when you're adding tables into a data set the sequence will matter like I added employee table first then the index of this table would be 0 and for the department table the index will be 1. So this is how you can actually uh, manage like now when I want to retrieve a particular table from this data set either I can access it by the name of the table like department and employee or by the index like 0 and 1. So this is how we can store the data uh, tables in the data set. 
now let's see how can we establish a relationship so here the relationship means the primary key foreign key relationship so I have already added the primary keys in the departments table as well as in the employee table in my department table the department ID is the primary key so what I am doing is I am making a foreign key in the employees table department ID column so I have taken a couple of variables here of data column type to access the column so for accessing the column from the data set first of all I'll have to access the table so ds dot tables department table which table I'm accessing department I can also pass the index 1 because it is at the index 1 so it's all your choice if you want to pass the name you can continue like this or if you can also pass the index of that particular column and similarly department ID is the first column of your uh, data table department you can pass the index 0 so it's simply all your choice like whether you want to access the column as per the name or the index and the same case is with the table also when it's being added inside the data set now once I have retrieved both the columns I can use the data relation class right here and all these classes like data set and data relation is also coming from the system dot data namespace so you don't need to add any other namespace in your code now so in this data relation what you have you have what you can do is at the time you are initializing or calling the constructor you have to pass three parameters the first one is the name of the relationship means the constraint so I've kept the name like EMP underscore DPT underscore relation you can put anything out there second parameter is the name of the primary key column and the third parameter is the name of the foreign key so I've just passed the reference of those particular objects and later ds dot relations dot add so as soon as you will write this particular line in this particular data set the relationship would be maintained and later I have just returned this data set as the return type is of data set now in this form load what I have done is I got that data set I have added a couple of data grid view here like in the previous example I just take one for the employee table here I have a couple of tables so I have taken two uh, data grid views for that and here data grid view one dot data source is equal to my ds dot tables zero zero means employee table as I said either you can pass the name of the table or the index so let me do it in that both the ways alright so here for the first table I pass the name of the table that is the employee and I assigned this name to the data table by the time we were creating the data table and uh, later what I have done is in the second I have assigned the index one table that is the department table so when I'll execute this one you can see in the first the same four records are there but in the second data grid view the two records are there from the department's table having two columns that is department ID and department name so this is how you can start working with the data sets in the disconnected architecture of ADO.NET